Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. After understanding how mutations in a given gene or specifically on P sites can alter expression of the gene and its effect on the signaling pathways. We will now learn about how gene lists can be transformed into the pathways by Dr. Kasten Krug. He will talk about how one could interpret the role of differentially expressed genes in clinical conditions as compared to the healthy individuals by analyzing the pathways which are affecting them. He will also talk about various pathway and databases which can be used to analyze pathways such as MSIGDB, Wiki pathways, KEG and others. He will also talk about two basic ways to perform pathway enrichment. So, let us now welcome Dr. Kirsten Krug to talk in more detail about how one can use various tools and transform the gene list to the pathways and make sense out of the data which one is obtained using various omic technologies. So, in this lecture we want to talk about how we can come or how we can transform gene lists into pathways. You know if you perform your experiment, you compare your wild type and knockout, you perform your statistical test uh, that Mani was talking about, you end up with long lists of differentially expressed proteins, phosphocytes or genes and possibly uh, uh, you know a high weight or like a higher proportion of those might be false positives meaning they are actually not differentially expressed in your, in your sample. And this makes it very hard to interpret these results biologically. So, this is just an example here. So, if you look at luminal A and basal breast cancer subtype uh, that we have looked at yesterday in the hands on session, we see there is more than 1000 proteins are regulated in basal or differentially regulated between basal and, and luminal. Um, you know, but actually what we want to know what are the biological pathways that drive these kind of separations between luminal and basal. So, in order to do that, there is many different ways how to perform pathway analysis and, and it all starts with a pathway database and you know how do we uh, represent the pathway in a computer. So, pathway in the most simplest case is a group of genes that are members of a pathway or that share some common biological uh, process. Right? So, it is basically a pathway is a list of genes, gene symbols and there is many different resources for pathway databases like MSIGDB uh, developed at a broad wiki pathways, NetPath which has been developed here in, in by Alex, uh, by, by Penny's group. There is the uh, Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomes, Reactome and there is even more. So, in here in these, if you click on these links it will directly uh, uh, forward you to the actual website for these databases. So, I just want to briefly point out Wiki Pathways which is a very promising research resource for curated pathways which has been uh, you know developed over the last couple of years, but now it really starts to take off. So, this is like a Wikipedia for pathways. So, everybody who is you know studying a specific pathway. So, maybe you and you in your particular lab you are interested in one specific pathway. So, actually you are the expert to do this kind of curation of a pathway right. And this website or this, this entire resource you know should enable you as a researcher to, to help the community to provide well and highly accurate uh, curated pathways. So, we are also using that, that, um, that resource a lot. And you know they also have like a curator of the week here and, and things like that. So, if you are really uh, contributing a lot to that resource you might end up on their web page. So, ok there is pathway databases. So, now we want to do pathway enrichment and there is uh, basically two different ways how to perform that or how to approach that problem. So, one is um, you know based on some sort of test. So, here I just pointed out the Fisher's, Fisher's test where you test uh, for over or under representation of pathways in a list of genes in a list of differentially expressed genes uh, you know in two conditions let us say tumor and normal. 
So meaning what that means, uh, you have to define this list of differentially expressed proteins beforehand, before you do your pathway analysis. Let's say you compare basal and luminal and then you do your statistical test, two sample t-tests, and you look at everything that is differentially expressed at 1% FDR. So that's the input to your pathway analysis. The other approach is so-called uh, gene set enrichment analysis, which has been introduced uh, in 2005. It's hi you know, highly cited. It's you know very convenient way to look for you know, small but coordinated changes you know, that you observe in your sample. Let's say like a protein does not maybe pass the threshold for being statistically significant in this pathway, but if you observe many different members of the same pathway that might not change a lot, but they all change into the same direction, right? Which increases the evidence that your pathway might be enriched. So, and the main difference compared to the first approach is that here we are looking at all measurements. We don't filter anything beforehand, but we look at all measurements, uh, you know, at once. Um, so briefly about Fisher's exact test, I'm sure that, that many of, of you guys uh, are aware of that. It's a test to, uh, you know, to test significance of contingency tables. So tables that, so, um, you know, that's a little story that, that Mani used to tell here. So it has been developed by, by I. Fisher and to address claims by a good friend that he had. Uh, she was uh, called uh, uh, Miss uh, Bristol and she kind of <clears throat> insisted uh, that she is able to tell whether the milk or tea was poured first in a cup. And so in order to prove her wrong, he conducted a little experiment, you know, by, you know, uh, conducting this ex experiment eight times, and he would pour uh, three times the, f tea, the tea first into the cup and three times the milk first into the cup, and then he just, uh, you know, filled out this contingency, he counted the number of successes of the lady, uh, you know, um, and filled out this contingency table, and then you can basically calculate Fisher's exact p-value by just enumerating about overall possibilities and calculate the p-value. So in this case, he proved her wrong. And you can do the same with pathways. So let's say you want to compare your pathway and your differentially expressed list of genes. So here you have your gene list, uh, gene list uh, on the x-axis and you ask the question whether the gene is in your list or not. And here on the y, you look for the pathways, so meaning if the gene is in your pathways or not. Right? And then you, you can fill out this matrix. Uh, it should, you always compare against the background, so the total n should sum up, for example, to all genes in your human genome which in this case, depending on which database you are using, this number might be slightly different. In this case, we have roughly 19,000 genes. And here's a little uh, example. So let's say this is my pathway. This isn't like an arbitrary theoretical example. This is no, you know, does not have any biological meaning, but you have your pathway, uh, you know, and everything that is highlighted in bold here does overlap with your gene list, so meaning six, of uh, your, your, your gene list members on this pathway uh, and so on and so forth. And your background is in this case is a universe of 20 genes. Again, just as an example to how to fill up this, this uh, contingency table. And then you can basically, again using R, you can just calculate Fisher's p-value. In this case, uh, it is not significant whatsoever. All right, so this is something you do for every pathway that you want to test. One very uh, you know, convenient tool to use, a very powerful tool, is, uh, is called David, um, which uh, has been published uh, several years back, but is very powerful and very easy to use. So you can just, as I just described, you can just paste in your list of differential genes. Uh, you can tell the software whether this is my gene list of interest or whether, is, whether this is my background list then you can, can perform these sort of tests that I just described. And you will get, for all and every pathway, you will get a p-value uh, and enrichment scores and, and things like that. So it's very convenient to use, because, to use because you just go into Excel, do your 
uh, or go into the result of your statistical test in Excel, you filter your significant genes and then you just paste them in here. So now we want to talk about gene set enrichment analysis or GSEA. And this is also something we want to try during hands-on sessions. So I hope that we make that work. So as I already mentioned here, you take into account all genes and you don't have to filter before you do the analysis. And so it's basically what I just said. So gene sets, so pathways are also called gene sets. Or so basically with the introduction of GSA, uh, the board also came up with a collection of gene sets, which uh, again, is just a collection of genes which might refer to a pathway or you know, the shared biological process and so on and so forth. But in, in general, a gene set is nothing else in a pathway. And there's a large collection of those uh, you can find in, uh, in the molecular signatures database or MCDB. So if you go to this website, you'll find this kind of overview. So these are different categories of gene sets which you can find in MCDB. Um, and here I just highlighted I guess which are the most commonly used gene sets in MCDB. So one is the so-called Hallmark gene set database, uh, data set or gene set, which is a, is a very small database. These are just 50 signatures or 50 pathways, but they are highly curated and represent very uh, important and common cancer Hallmark pathways. And the other one uh, is the so-called C2CP. CP stands for canonical pathways. So that's a collection of gene sets that have been derived from other, you know, pathway databases like CAC or Reactome and so on and so forth. Canonical means, uh, you know, these are so what we believe is the actual pathway. And there's others that might or might not be of interest. For example, if you are used to geo like gene ontology terms, you can also look into the, uh, the category C5 and so on and so forth. So the general principle of GSEA is shown on this slide here. There's actually figure one, I believe, from the original publication uh, back in 2005. So you, again, you start with a data matrix. So we, we've seen this kind of data format uh, a couple of times in our uh, workshop. So you measure features, in this case it's genes on, in your rows, and you measure these features across a set of samples. And you, know, you always want to compare at least two phenotypes, two conditions, right? In this case, it's condition A or phenotype A and phenotype B. Let's say one is tumor, one is normal. So, and you somehow rank these gene lists, and you would rank it in a way that you, rank, that you would rank differentially genes accordingly. For example, you do your, your, your two sample t test, and then you rank it according to your p value. Right? So, the most significantly differential genes are on, on the top, and then the further down you go, the less significant it is, it becomes. Um, so you have a list of ranked gene sets uh, or genes and then you take your pathway of interest so this is now just one pathway again and you look where in my ranked list of genes do the members of this pathway fall so all of these like horizontal bars are locations of members of this gene set in my actual data right and here you see that here in, in, in this upper part of this plot you see there's many more horizontal bars than down here. So there is an enrichment of this pathway. Just visually, you can see that, right? So there is an enrichment of this pathway among, uh, you know, among genes that are differential between A and B. That's the principle. So in how you calculate that, so they calculate a uh, so-called uh, enrichment score, or ES, by Basically, so now we, are, uh, we have transposed this matrix, so we are now looking at the ranks on, on the horizontal uh, uh, axis here, so from, from high to low, and now we basically calculate an enrichment score by walking down this list here, and whenever we see a member, we observe a member in our data set, we increase our, our uh, running sum statistic here. And if we don't observe a member, we decrease it. Right? And this builds up this kind of 
mountain blood here. And at some point, you don't observe enough members of this pathway anymore. That, that, so meaning this, this running some statistics starts, stops to increase. You, you constantly, constantly decrease. And then there's different ways how to quantify this enrichment scores. So one is just taking the, you know, the, the maximum deviation here, or you can also calculate the, the area under the curve and things like that. So there's you know, different nuances to that type of analysis, but that's the general principle. So just to mention, so this is one enrichment score. In order to calculate the p-value for that enrichment score, you would you know, repeat this analysis 1,000 times. You, know, you would do 1,000 permutations. And you would, do, you would permute your class labels. You would shovel your class labels just to get a background distribution. And you would repeat this analysis. You get a distribution. And then from that distribution, you can calculate an, an empirical p-value for your observed enrichment score. All right? So that's the general principle of GSA. You compare two phenotypes. And you have measured a sufficient number of replicates, like biological replicates, in your phenotype A and B. So another approach to this kind of gene set enrichment analysis is also uh, is the so-called signature projection method, or single sample GSEA, which basically works on a single class data set. So there you don't necessarily want to compare you know, two conditions. You, you might not have any replicates, so you just have a single data vector, let's say. This data ve vector can be anything. It can be you know, expression values in a single condition, so you just have one experiment, measure the proteome, in one time point, let's say, um, and you want to look at high abundant and low abundant proteins in general. Or you can do, you can uh, uh, you know, look at on a protein correlation coefficients. You can, your ranking would be you know, highly correlated protein or genes in proteome and RNA space uh, you know, compared to low correlated or negatively correlated genes, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the principle. So basically, what you do, if you have a data matrix, you would project your, let's say these are gene-centric matrices, and you would project each column into pathway space. And we will do that during hands-on, and I hope that this will become a bit clearer. But basically, that's, that's why it's called a signature projection method. So you start with your genes or proteins whatsoever, and then you apply this method, and in the end, you have the same kind of matrix, but instead of looking at genes, you're looking at pathways. And with this matrix, you can again do like all kinds of statistical analysis, like you know, supervised or unsupervised marker selection type of analysis, and so on and so forth. I hope you have learned how the pathways provide information for the combination of correlated genes making a network to make a system functional. You also learned that wiki pathways is like Wikipedia for pathways. We also learned about hypergeometrical test which is based on Fisher's exact test where one can compare clinical conditions with healthy individuals and make a pathway based on differentially expressed genes. Other pathway enrichment approaches like gene set enrichment analysis or GSEA, it includes all the proteins in the study without filtration and mapping a pathway. The next lecture is going to be the continuation of the pathway enrichment by Dr. Crook. Thank you.